Now, we all know that data is essential for improving business. Now, unfortunately, discussions and solutions around analytics have always been kind of exclusively for large enterprises, right? A lot of these uh, different um, architectures that we're talking about, the solutions that we're talking about really are, are only achievable when you have teams of five to 10, 15 people that are, that are delivering them. But what we're starting to see as a trend ongoing is that smaller and smaller organizations want to get the same business value from analytics um, that everyone else is talking about. So what we're seeing is folks kind of like data analysts that are, you know, that maybe they have tools like Excel, they have Power BI, they have Tableau, uh, and they're trying to get insights to the business as quickly as possible. But of course, they're running into bottlenecks, they're running into barriers, because we all know you need a robust data architecture if you're going to make sense of complex data. And so as they go into this, they're starting to realize that they need skills to ingest, and model, and transform. Uh, and they're trying to do that themselves. Um, this role is becoming more and more common in organizations, and it's being dubbed the analytics engineer, essentially a data analyst that has acquired and built up the skills to, um, to do a lot of data engineering tasks. The challenge is, again, that, that the best, best practice data architectures, um, they're, uh, they're highly complex. And again, a lot of the solutions, a lot of software uh, that's available out there are designed for large enterprises, right? So how does this one analytics engineer or two or three uh, be able to deploy these solutions that are designed to be managed by 10 or 15 different people? So um, the typical uh, solution uh, for a lot of uh, enterprise organizations is what's known as the modern data stack. Uh, and the, the modern data stack is a collection of different tools that are, are put together to provide uh, insights for the organization. The challenge is, of course, um, this can be very time consuming to build, right? There's a lot of different tools. Um, and as we all know, acquiring any one of these tools in an organization means that everyone needs to agree on it and we need to sign paperwork. And so it can take months uh, just for a single tool, right? To, to be able to be adopted in the organization. Um, then you'll have to, of course, set them up, right? You have to set each one of these up and then you have to stitch them together. Oftentimes these tools don't talk to one another, right? So there's gonna be some custom integration that's happening, bringing them together, trying to make them work together. Um, they lack holistic governance because again, none of the tools talk to each other. So you don't know who has access to what that can create some issues depending on um, GDPR or, or other sort of uh, regulatory compliance that might be happening in the organization. Um, then orchestrating from, from the beginning all the way to the end can be very, very complex. But what you're starting to see here is that in order to deploy and maintain a solution like this is it really is going to require a large team of highly experienced, highly educated people. Um, and as I say that, I'm sure you can start to imagine the dollar signs uh, going across my eyes uh, like the like the old school cartoons. Right. Uh, this type of a solution is extremely expensive to deliver, uh, which means that it's really only for large enterprises. Only large enterprises can have a team of 10 to 15 uh, master degree level uh, engineers that are maintaining this. So what is the solution here, right? What, how do we move? How do we move forward? Um, we know that technology is becoming increasingly easier to access, right? So tools like Snowflake, and Redshift and Synapse that are that are out there that are available that we can go and log into a website and deploy in just a matter of minutes. We don't need to go and, and get all of this hardware, uh, put all this hardware together and stitch that together anymore. We can do that just in the cloud. So the technology uh, is is much, much easier to to access. But still, only large enterprises can afford to uh, deploy these because it still requires highly skilled engineering teams to do this, right? So you still need 10 to 15 people to interact with uh, and, and code on a data lake or inter interact with a 
uh, a database like Snowflake because it still requires a lot of manual hand coding. So the rest of us need now in order for the the smaller and smaller businesses to start and be able to deploy a robust data architecture, right? They need a solution that's agile. Uh, and when I say agile, I mean something that's really focused on business outcomes and delivering business outcomes quickly, because that's the end goal here, right? Um, they need something that's holistic, meaning um, not a bunch of tools that are stitched together, not a bunch of uh, time being spent on training on 15 different platforms, but something that you can ingest, integrate and deliver data um, in a very simple solution. And also something that's easy to use. Again, you can't have uh, five to 10 master degree level um, um, people on your team if you're a small to medium sized business. It's just too expensive. Um, so you need something that's easier to use. And that's really where our solution comes in. Time Extender is a low code, no code interface that helps uh, any size business deliver real outcomes through data solutions 10 times faster. And it reduces costs by 70 to 80%. Uh, again, a lot less time coding means a lot more time delivering insights. Um, Time Extender delivers these solutions in three distinct layers. The first layer is what we refer to as the operational data exchange. Now, this is typically uh, considered a data lake, doesn't have to be a data lake, uh, but this is where you ingest uh, that data into the initial layer, ingest that raw data. Uh, the second layer is the modern data warehouse. And this is where, of course, you're inter integrating that data together, uh, making it available in a clean, uh, modeled way that's easier to access uh, for the organization. And then the third layer is what we call the semantic models. So being able to take that large data warehouse, break it out into small relevant data models that are relevant for different departments. You might have one for sales, one for uh, the purchasing department, one for the finance department, but making that as easy as possible uh, to access. And again, having this in a low code, no code platform means that um, a data analyst can now achieve this type of architecture and deliver that for their organization and start delivering real, uh, true business outcomes with data. One of the key outcomes of, of Time Extender as well is that it is um, the business logic. So how this data comes together is abstracted from the data storage layer. So if you choose and to start and build this on a SQL server, you can build all the business logic out and have a solution. And then later on say, you know what, I want to switch to data lake and snowflake. Well, in time extender, that's just a checkbox. And all of the code underlying code can be redeployed within just a few seconds. Now, because Time Extender keeps track of all the metadata, that means that things like documentation and data lineage are just one click away. Not only that, the orchestration, because Time Extender maintains all the dependencies for uh, each table in the entire solution, uh, orchestration is intelligent. Uh, not only that, it's reordered for efficiency. That means you're going to have the fastest load times possible. Now, personally, I've helped tons of customers obtain real business outcomes incredibly fast using Time Extender, even with a team of just one to two people. Uh, so it's really, really incredible to see these smaller organizations being able to achieve these real business outcomes. Uh, I've helped companies like Komatsu and Pandora uh, do this as well as uh, flew out to Puerto Rico and helped them do it and, and uh, Michigan State Capital. So I've, I've, I've been in their shoes. I've seen what they go through and it's, it's tough. It's not easy, but having a solution that uh, makes it a lot easier to achieve this uh, and seeing the reactions from people is just really exciting to, to see. If you're interested in learning more, take a look at our website. Um, you can actually use time extender for free. You can download it and get started right away. So um, yeah, please reach out if uh, you have any questions.